Hello, this is David Metric, founder of Airbrook One, where we are reimagining how you can book and fly privately. We just had a great conversation with the CEO of Ajax Jets out of Norwell, Massachusetts, Justin Sullivan. I think everyone's going to like this particular podcast because Justin's take, his mindset, his team's mindset for delivering what I call extraordinary service is top notch. And I think you guys will enjoy it. Thanks. All right, welcome everybody to the Jetmetric Podcast. Today we have another exciting visitor, uh, the CEO of AGX Jets, Justin Sullivan. Welcome, Justin. Hey, great to, to be here, David. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, and truth be told, we had a really great conversation earlier in the week. So if we could just emulate the conversation, it'll be great for today. Absolutely. You know, kindred spirits. It's always great to meet like-minded friends in, in a business like this. I appreciate so, that. Fun to get to know you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so you're based in Norwell, Massachusetts, correct? Yeah, our, our sales and charter office is in Norwell. So if you could give us a brief overview of Ajax Jets, um, that'd be great for the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So Ajax Jets is a, an integrated charter aircraft management and customer solutions company. Um, we're a, really a family of different aviation businesses that centers on delivering high-end personalized service on our own fleet of, of owned and managed executive business jets, kind of a retail access point for retail customers to access private air travel on the best terms all over the country. And behind that goes a Part 135 air charter certificate where we operate several aircraft that we own um, and manage for, for high net worth families and, and businesses and a, 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 an aircraft maintenance business um, with facilities up and down the East Coast where we service not only our own planes, but also um, other companies' airplanes. Got it. Okay. So but you, there's some of the aircraft you own yourselves, correct? And then some you're just managing for others. Correct. So in, in our fleet, we've got four company-owned airplanes. Others are, are operated for high net worth families and, and businesses. Most of our, of our fleet is comprised of, of triple net leased airplanes. So in, in such a model, a owner will acquire an airplane, will then lease it to us. And unlike a traditional asset management model where the owner is really responsible for the profit and the loss of the plane, in our triple net lease, we shift that burden to the company. So we pay the owner a fixed monthly rent payment for, their, for the use of their aircraft. And then we run that asset as a business, a self-liquidating business and charter, whereby the owner is flying at basically cost or direct operating costs for their flights. And, and that's subsidized by retail charter customers in the broader market who pays retail rates. Brilliant. That's actually, I, I like that model. Takes uh, a lot of the risk out, I think, for everybody. It, it, it probably makes you all work a little harder to charter the plans, I assume. Although with today's uh, world of super high demand, it's probably a little bit easier, just chaotic, I assume. Well, it, it really helps us prioritize who we're taking care of on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, we, as a business, really live to serve the owners of, of the planes in our fleet. That includes fractional owners. So some, some planes are owned by four different families or four different individuals who buy a 25% interest in that plane. And the whole reason that we're, we're able to do what we do is because we have these planes and, and we prioritize um, taking care of our owners and getting them where they need to be. And then we have naturally hundreds of retail charter customers who've been with my company for years. And, and you know, we meet new customers every day. Um, these are salt of the earth families, athletes, entertainers, lawyers, doctors, um, who are just looking for safe passage. And, and I, I think one of the things that, that sets us apart is, is the, um, the vintage of planes. So most of our, of, of our owned and, and operated planes are from the eighties and nineties. They're, they're very nice, well-maintained, beautiful cabins, airworthy, totally safe, updated avionics, um, really great flying machines, but the asset, 
acquisition cost of these planes is is 10% of that of a, of a brand new plane. Yeah, that was going to be my question, actually, because I remember our call uh, earlier in the week. You made that you made mention of that, that it's, you know, it's more important for the passengers to have a really super nice interior. They're not so concerned about the exterior. And as long as the engines and avionics are updated, it's like a new plane anyways, once you renovate the inside. Yeah, it, it feels like a brand new plane. Correct. And, and for for the cost of, so we also operate two Challenger, a late model Challenger 350 and a late model Challenger 300. So in today's market, a Challenger 350 is, you know, 22 to $25 million asset. Mm-hmm. And for that 20 to, you know, 20 to 25 million, you can have, you know, seven to 10 Falcon 50s which is, you know, again, a, a different nine seat super midsize jet with right. coast to coast range can get into 4,000 foot runway, um, can, um, can do really anything that, that you know, a plane that costs 10 times as much can, can do. But from, from, you know, our business standpoint, we're here to take care of more customers. There are more customers out there that, that need our help than we can help just given this, the size of our plane of our fleet. And, you know, it, it's naturally a lot easier to, to add two to $5 million planes um, in, on mass than, than um, the newer planes. But we're, we're also getting into the Gulfstream business. We're moving up market. Um, one of our, our initiatives for, for the second half of this year is to transition our charter certificate from a nine or less to a 10 or more, which will give us worldwide operating specs and the ability to add Falcon 900s and Gulfstreams at current so the way that I started this, David, is I, I I didn't start off owning my own charter certificate. Been a broker for 18 years, and and several years ago I launched a career path where I, I started managing assets, but I always outsourced the 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 actual operation to a different Part 135. Um, so I, I still have several of those relationships, and that's where my heavy jets currently live. But naturally, I'd rather build my own business and and. Um, be able to to, to scale this th- uh, in in a way that, that that gives us the us and our our, our stakeholders the 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 most flexibility and and frankly the most upside and the most control of our destiny, and and that for us is is um, continuing to move up market and, and manage bigger planes. So when you do that, well, one quick thing I was going to mention, what it's just interesting. We have certain filters on our end at you know, Airbrook One how we want people doing searches. And we actually do it the same way you do. We we have the renovated date very current and the manufacturer date not so much, if you will. And then everything is a minimum um, high safety rating of gold or plus, if you will, um, on Argus. So our searches actually do actually you come up, I know you come up, come up in our searches a lot, actually. Ajax Jets have seen you um is, is a list of opportunity, just FYI, but yeah, well, hey, if, if you ever if you ever sorting by by newest date of, of interior refurbishment, our whole fleet is gonna is gonna I know, pop either, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, see, I, see the, I see the name all the time. So we have to figure that connection out so we can start using your jets. But that also leads to I mean, my next question was going to be like what scheduling of buying airplanes, which you mentioned going upstream to golf to golf stream. So I assume, well, I'm not gonna assume anything. Is that a purchase of a new? plane or use and i'm asking that because we were um talking to somebody who wanted us who wanted us to get into fractional ownership and so we were pricing out citation 10 for example and because they're workhorses and they can fly a million hours and you know we refer some new you know and but but the the issue was three four years ago a used one was three million dollars and now they're nine plus and a new one's like 13 so there's that you know do you buy a new one do you buy a used one i hear other people talk about that as well. So I'm curious how you're looking at the acquisition of moving upstream. So it's, it's, it's always in, in our book, uh, a leverage game. So the, the way that we get leverage is by buying assets that are, are not top dollar and, and similar to the, the, the theory behind it. I'd rather have seven to 10 Falcon fifties than right. one challenger 350. Right. Um, they have seven to 10 times the cash flow. A big part of, of our future as a business is not necessarily owning aircraft. There are, are high net worth families and businesses that are very well positioned to avail themselves of the tax and lifestyle benefits of, of and financial benefits of, of owning an asset. So our Gulfstream business and, and most of our future planes are either going to be managed airplanes 
or triple net leased where somebody else owns the asset and it enters into a financial transaction with us to get a fixed financial return for it and then also get flight time. One of the ways that we've we've built our business without taking in um, you know, losing equity or taking in um, those types of financial partners by trading on future access to our fleet. So we'll sell fractional shares, which entitle an owner to a, a basically a 50 occupied hour a year jet card for a, a, a very attractive rate over, over a five year period um, or a fractional share um, or, or buying a whole airplane. Um, in, in any of those cases, we're adding a whole unit of supply and, and in today's market, a dedicated charter use aircraft is a very valuable asset because there's so much demand and, you know, really the, the supply side of our industry, as I'm sure you feel every day, um, it feels tighter and tighter. And that's because companies like Wheels Up and Vista Global have gone on this buying spree and they've bought up Delta Private Jets and travel management company, Red Wing, and, you know, all those, all of those fleets are, are have evaporated out of the charter market, um, which means you know, any day that any plane is available to fly, it's, it's flying. It's, it, it's really amazing. So we just, we just need more of those planes. And, and, you know, I think one of the things in, in my life, I've, I've always, you know, tried to zig when other people zag and the conventional wisdom um, is to, to, to buy newer planes, but, um, you know, we, we've cracked the code. We, we've got a great model for for operating assets like this. We've got a, a team of of AMP technicians who grew up managing and, and maintaining um, classic Gulf Streams. I mean, obviously, these planes they weren't classic when when they were built in the the 80s and 90s when these guys were working on them. But you know, it's a it's a great body of knowledge and and technical systems and technical know how to maintain equipment like this. And it's really like um, like a lost art, you know. If you if you bring a a classic Falcon 50 or a classic 900 to Dassault Falcon Jet, a lot of those younger technicians don't know how to work on these older systems. Right. So from from the parts network to the um, to the, the maintenance best practices, the team pilots were very plugged into the the, the Dassault Falcon pilot community, and and one other benefit for for us. Falcon 50 is a nine-seat super mid-sized jet. Falcon 900 is a 14-seat heavy jet. It's one of the few executive business jets that have the exact same pilot type rating. So a Falcon 50 pilot can go to simulator training at flight safety and he can come out of that and be ready to fly on a Falcon 900 um, without going to additional school. So for us, you know, in our, in our move to, to become a 10 or more certificate at Gulfstreams in the 900s, we'll have that additional leverage point of being of having such crew crewing flexibility. Hmm. That's a good idea. Makes sense. So so given how it, I mean, the business is crazy right now, and I'll talk to people like, oh, you must be killing it, you know, because it's so busy. And you know, to some extent, we are, but the other extent extent is, you know, I think everyone on our side is kind of pulling their hair out because you know, as we just talked about before, um, aircraft uh, supply is tight um, and demands through the roof. So. How, like, um, the aircraft management piece, the fractional ownership piece, the charter the charter biz piece, you, you kind of have it all there. I mean, I assume it's all clicking. You said you kind of cracked the code, so it's all clicking, working well, not a lot of issues with the super high demand. And even, you know, parts are an issue, too, as we know in flight crews. What keeps me up, David, is, is operational issues. So sourcing parts. Um, just, you know, like anybody, this is, it, it, there's been a, the, the supply chains from, from a maintenance, from even from, from moving pilots around, you know, last week we had a, a major service disruption because a pilot who was flying in to, to pick up a flight the next day, her flight was canceled and, and she did not get, she, she was not able to make it into Denver the night before for her, her scheduled flight out that day. We had a 12 hour delay. And it was, it was very painful, very painful for that customer. I'm sorry to that customer. Um, you know, we, we, we deal with things like that. And, you know, I, I can't tell you that in, in 18 years of, of this business, I haven't seen as many problems as I've seen in the last 12 months. 
And, you know, I think it's because these planes, they've flown way more than, than they're used to flying. They're behind the eight ball on their maintenance cycles. So every hour that a plane flies, every calendar day brings closer, you know, a, a maintenance due list and, and parts that need to be overhauled and, and service that needs to be done. So when you pack more hours into a, into a, a, a smaller calendar window, those, those maintenance items can creep up and can become very unexpected. I never thought about and, that way. That's a good point. Robert. Yeah. 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 So how, so how, so how, how's like this, uh, your staff, so to say, everybody, you know, from maintenance crews, the scheduling, how are they you know, dealing with it? I mean, have you hired more people kind of same size so you were 12, 18 months ago when everyone's like, got going no, we're, we're, hour. We're, we're always hiring on, on the, the, the maintenance, um, flight dispatch, maintenance control, um, you know, th- th- those teams, there's so much business. Um, we're, we're, we're currently running two shifts in our, at, at all of our maintenance facilities. And there are some, some facilities where on given weeks, we're running a third shift um, to, to keep the planes moving in and out and, and keep our retail customers happy, especially in upstate New York, because of our proximity to, um, to Bombardier up there. Bombardier does not want to deal with classic Lear jets. They do not want to deal with Challenger 601s and 604s. So they kick a lot of that, that business our way. Um, and and in, in many weeks, we're running three shifts. So, you know, almost a 24-hour maintenance schedule. Um, oh, so, so, you, so, you're, so you're doing maintenance for them? Like outsourced. So so somebody will, will call, will, will say, hey, Bombardier, I've, I've got a... Um, you know, 12 and 24 do on my Lear 60 and they'll say, yeah, well, we could take you in about nine months or you can call <laughs> Ajax jets and they can get you yeah, in. Got and, it. Okay. And that's leave. great. That's great for you guys. It's like, a, it sounds like a new, another business, if you will. Well, it, the thing for us is it's self-liquidating. It's very expensive to keep a, a full maintenance team and, and especially all over the country and planes break and, and need maintenance all over the country. So um, we couldn't keep a staff this size just working on our own fleet. So we really need that, that right. to, to be a, a retail um, retail maintenance facility or retail maintenance business. Yeah, so it's, like a, it's like another vertical of revenue. I guess it's, it's hard to do, but. It just protects right. the, it really protects our customers. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, I, I've always got people I can call when we need parts, when, when our, our pilots are on the road and, and need to, need to talk through something there's always there's always staff there who, who who know this we've got you know all the computerized manuals computerized maintenance records on on the airplanes and you know just much like uh you know a mission control would for a space shuttle launch um it's all hands on deck when there's when there's a service issue to 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 get it fixed and and you know sometimes that leads to arranging outstation maintenance um, but it could also lead to Hey, this this tire is looking worn. We're gonna we're we're gonna get get in advance of it. Plane's gonna be um, coming through New York on in, in two days. We'll 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 ship a new wheel assembly to New York and 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 have a team there ready to to, to swap it out. Got it. A lot of coordination, to say the least. Yeah, it's just a lot of man hours. You know, and there's no way we talked about this the other day. There's there's no way to get away. You can't systematize, you know, a lot of these things. And, and I, I think that in, in our line of work where, you know, you and I are really on the front lines of, of delivering the most exclusive service known to man. I mean, what, what's more expensive and, and higher stakes than a, a perfectly delivered executive jet charter service? Not, not a whole lot, right? And, and when the stakes are that high, you need to a yourself be a, a, a consummate professional, um, and and have have good systems and, and and good people who can deal with these situations. Private Jet Maintenance is your source for maintenance, repair, and overhaul services in the New York tri-state area in Florida. Avoid expensive, painful downtime on your jet. If you own or maintain an executive business jet, especially one manufactured in the year 2000 or before, you may have gotten the cold shoulder from OEM service centers like Dassault Falcon Jet, Bombardier, and Gulfstream for the simple reason that they do not want your business. 
They're too busy with warranty work. Their young technicians don't understand how these classic jet systems work. And for that reason, if you're able to get a slot at one of these OEMs, expect to pay through the nose and expect your job to take forever. Downtime of your jet leads to huge outside charter costs and a lack of control, which is probably why you bought your business jet in the first place. At private jet maintenance, our average technician has 23 years experience keeping private jets in state-of-the-art condition. Scheduled inspections, avionics installations, engine inspections, removal and replace, aircraft interior service, A checks, B checks, C checks, D checks, landing gear overhauls. About the only thing we don't do is paint. If you own a classic business jet, don't trust your asset to anyone else. Whether you need to punch out a do list, your jet is broken and you need AOG support in the Northeast or Florida, or if you're looking for an outsourced maintenance department for your aircraft, my guys, Ben Chifo, Scott Knopp, Brian Judah and their team know how to keep your plane flying safely, compliantly, and they'll always shoot you straight. We have hangars with highly skilled technicians in New York and Florida. To discuss your airplane MRO needs, please contact our Director of Maintenance, Ben Chifo, directly at 716-863-4200. With our team, I would say we have to deliver extraordinary service 24-7, no matter what, I mean, no matter what. And uh, I think that's why we have repeat business, which is seems to be hard, hard. Was I think it's easier to get repeat business, especially because when you deliver extraordinary service, it's hard. To, I think now it's a little bit harder to find new business. There's so many different options out there, and I think people need to get educated about what's, what's going on. And one thing I will say, I've talked to a few operators on here and then offline, and I will, I will say, I hope some of the listeners will check out Ajax Jets because I just like the way you look at everything, how you, how you look at the, the business, your approach, you know, the, the premium service, you understand the customer, and I, and, I, and it, you definitely go above and beyond, um, as, as you should and everybody else should be doing um, to retain and acquire new customers. So it's just refreshing to hear because I've spoken to other people who do not have your same view. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that, David. I, I'll tell you, a lot of it comes from from being a broker and and being being a broker, as you know, it, it can be humbling because you're really at the mercy of of other people and other service providers. And when things don't go right, customers can they can spew a bit of venom right at the at the broker who who steered them wrong. So as a broker, we're the front lines. That's what happens. You've really got to take. You've got to have a, a customer service in your DNA. You've got to have um, that white glove service delivery down pat. Your people have to speak the king's English. You have to be responsive. You have to do all of those things because as a broker, your world revolves around customers. But operators, and, and now that I'm an operator, um, I can see this um, in spades. Operators come at the business from a very different angle. Most operators are run by teams of pilots. The owner is a pilot. It's probably also the director of, of, of operations um, or, or his own chief pilot. These guys have jet fuel running through their veins and they don't have that customer service DNA. And in my experience, most operators, that gruffness and, and uncaringness towards towards the retail clientele is very palpable. And customers, re- rich guys, um, you know, athletes, entertainers. They'll move on. They'll move on. They won't have it. But, you know, it's interesting, man, because they've, they understand or they, they think they understand that, hey, if I want to get the best price, I've got to go to the source. I've got to, got to build a relationship with an operator. But when they do build, they, they do try to do that, they often get that gruff service that I just alluded Correct. to. Correct. So what I try to do here is, is bring that, that white glove customer service brokerage mentality to our interactions with retail customers who are trying to access our fleet. And, and that's that combination that, um, that I, I think is our secret sauce 
And um, you know, I, I have had one personal customer service person who's been at my side for 15 years. Her name's Maria White. Um, she's she's a, an, an older lady. And from the time that that I, you know, would would book a flight for a customer, I would hand it off to her. And all of the attention to detail and um, responsiveness and um, you know empathy of dealing with 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 situations, helping customers through through you know mechanicals or or deaths in the family or or you know all of the different very you know intricate situations that we deal with in, in the jet charter business. Having her as as my 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 anchor, where if I'm off doing something, I run a pretty big business. I'm not always the guy that's dealing with, with, with situations, but that continuity of, of having Maria on my team and um, advocating for my customers for, for, for such a long time um, ha- has really been a blessing for, for continuing to, to grow and, and meet new people because it gives me the, the bandwidth to do it. Right. That's right? right. So I'm sure, I'm sure in your business, you've got, you, you've had, you know, um, a seasoned, customer service, service delivery Absolutely. person or people who, you know, get to know your, your, your customers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's irreplaceable. Agree. I said, it, it, the second you, I, you know, the second you can mess that up, um, it, it, that, that's pretty much it. There's a, there's, there are a lot of operators out there, out there, a lot of brokers out there. So a lot of choices, if you will. And um, everyone does need to be treated, you know, with white glove service. Otherwise again, they'll move on and find someone else, which is, you know, which certainly happens a lot. Um, how about, so, so talking about your retail clients, because you're, you're talking about that quite a bit, um, and you, you were a broker, you mentioned, so you had existing business. You said you're picking up new business all the time. How do you all go about finding new bookings? Um, if that's not, you know, proprietary, of course, but like, how do you, do you market? Um, is it your staff that does it? I'm just curious how you market yourself for in, in retail. We, we mostly through search engine optimization. So um, I have several different websites and, and landing pages that serve different niches of the industry. Um, what I have found since becoming an operator myself is that many customers who, who I hate to say they're out of my league, but they were out of my league as a broker because as a broker, I really didn't have anything proprietary to offer them other than, you know, my own great service. But for, for some people, that's not enough, understandably so. A lot of these customers are, are finding us and, and they're, they're people who, people or families who, you know, they're, they're savvy, they're in the market, they fly 50 or more hours a year. Um, so pretty, you know, high usage, high density travelers. And, and those customers are, are finding us because the word's out that we're approachable and accessible and, and we're, we have a growing fleet. And, and we don't give our service away, but we, we don't charge top, top dollar, uh, mostly because of the, the way that our, our aircraft are capitalized. So if, a, if an existing, is it, uh, two questions, you have an existing customer and a new customer. How many phone calls or interactions does it take with an existing customer to complete the booking and then the same thing with the new customer who doesn't know yet is kind of jumping in for the first time. Like five phone calls, two emails, you know, 10 interactions, two interactions. An existing customer will, will typically email me or his rep and request a quote within a few hours. He'll have several options back. There might be a couple calls or emails back and forth. And from, from there, it's a, a DocuSign. But what we try to do, David, is have our payments go through um, an, AC, an, an automatic online ACH system. So it, it, it's it's called Plaid. So they can they can log in through their own their own bank account, initiate a wire transfer right through our portal, and there's no wire fee, there's no um, credit card risk, no pr- proprietary information is going over the internet. Um, and we're completely secure because they wouldn't let the tran- the bank wouldn't let the transaction go if that money wasn't in the bank to initiate the ACH. Um, so we, we try to push all all transactions through that way, mm-hmm. um, and in that way, it's it's just a DocuSign 
very, very simple. Um, with a new customer, new customers tend to ask more questions right. and and want to know more about, about the company. Um, I often get on the phone with, with new customers and talk about our fleet. Um, oftentimes, after people have flown with us a couple of times, the conversation will come up. How do I get involved? Can I um, own one of these machines? Can I own a fraction of a machine? And we start to talk about more strategic types of, of solutions. Oh, got it. That makes sense. Now, with an older fleet, are you able to address, like some of our customers, are, they're asking us if some of the planes are energy efficient, the whole, the whole green topic, if you will. Um, yep. I know there's different fuels you can use, um, but has that come up at all? And then how have the high prices of fuel, you know, the past 12 months, how's that affecting your business? It's not really affecting things. It's 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 affecting some consumer behavior, not so much in terms of people not flying, but they're definitely being more cognizant of using lesser expensive airports. So, for example, if somebody were budget conscious and were flying out of Metro Boston, they could choose to fly out of Boston Logan and pay about ten dollars a gallon for Jet A, or they could drive. 25 minutes outside of the city to Bedford and pay, you know, 690, or they could drive 40 minutes out of the city to Plymouth and pay 580. And the types of people who use my service are the types of people who would drive 40 minutes to go to Plymouth and buy fuel for and you know, save save two grand on their their, their coast to coast flight. Got it. We just had somebody who wanted to fly to Cleveland and they opted to fly out of Akron instead for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that we definitely see that without question. I actually they wanted to do Cleveland, Indianapolis, and they did Akron, Bloomington, Indiana. <laughs> so see, that, that's just that's yeah. just good business. I yeah, think. and I, I don't disagree. So it was a little, little little trip, but that's what they wanted to do. So but you know that that's where where being a good broker and a good solutions provider. Is, is worth its weight in gold because a lot of customers aren't thinking of things in those terms. They need somebody like us to, to give them that advice. Agree. Like it's really, site, it, there's, there's no way to build a relationship with somebody like saving them several thousand dollars. If they see a quote from someone for 29,000 and I show them a Falcon 50 for 26,000 um, and they book that for, for three grand less and have a great experience. I'm not going to say I have a friend for life, but we, we've started to build a fa- uh, the foundation of a friendship. And, you know, the, these customers can fly several times a year. They're great people, great families. And, you know, as we, we, we build our relationships, just try to provide the best service. And, and that, you know, for, for me, I've been doing this for so long. I see a lot of angles and a lot of opportunities for people to, to do better. And, and I, you know, that's how I make friends. Yeah, no, that's I, I, exactly the right mindset I was talking about with you earlier. And that's one of the reasons why, why I got into this um, in this industry. I, fly, I think we talked before. I've flown privately for you know 25 years plus with clients of mine, all C level clients, and you know basically on a broker side, but in real estate. And I just always loved aircraft. And I'm just looking at this industry for all these years as a passenger, thinking like this is so complicated. And I would have to all the time call an operator and find an aircraft for clients that were, were flying you know three or four cities in a day, looking at locations. And it was brutal, totally brutal to figure the whole thing out. There's got to be a better way to do it. So for us, we were able to automate the pricing uh, based on the the, the aircraft um, marketplace. We we have a few different feeds. Um, so it's worked out well. So li- literally somebody can go on and just book it. And obviously, uh, and they could do ACH, they could do wire, they could do credit card, although no one really does credit card, obviously, because no one's going to pay 3% on $50,000. But the pricing has been so dynamic. I mean, it- yeah. If we were to, two years ago, I, I had a, a Falcon 50 access program that was $8,000 an hour. And, you know, if I were to look at per, per occupied hour, so you know, pretty, pretty attractive rate. in, in so, and, and, it, and that's all in, right? 8,000? Yeah. I mean, we, okay. I don't, I don't offer that anymore, but right. this is, you know, 2020 pricing. If I, when we look at, at our occupied hourly rate right now, forgetting about reposition, it's, it's like, 14,000 an hour. It's so I, I, I it, it's hard to, to, to put, put that into a formula that would, that would give somebody, you know, predictable pricing, right? Cause the price is just so crazy. 
They are. We, you know, for us, we use we use um, you know live live pricing, so you can literally do the same search three times in a day. An aircraft are coming on and off on the market feed, the number will change, not by a lot, but it will change. Got it. And you can also change um, by airport as well. And then there's always the option to click to the flight concierge to kind of help you finish the you know, finish it, if you will. But our our pricing is hard for sure, and I think part of it is for us. In, in essence, like yeah, we're a broker, but we're a volume business, so our our fee is literally twenty five to forty percent max of a normal broker. So that that takes a lot off the top as well, if you will. And then now we've got. I think I told you before we're working with a couple of different operators now to. to um, they want our, our booking platform embedded on their website and they want our app, which is fine. And I'm working on that right now. And so that, that'll be, for us, that'll be a big deal because it, it kind of takes, that's why I asked earlier um, how many interactions it takes. We're talking to operators, so they're telling us existing customers are five or plus interactions to get it done and new ones are about seven to 10. And our goal is to get that down to zero to two. Um, and, that, and that has happened with us for the bookings we've done. It's zero to two. People go on and book, not even talking to us. I think for, for us, it's, it's, it's a, it's different if it's a brokered trip or if it's on our own fleet, you know, if it's, if it's on our own fleet, somebody's booking a flight on a Falcon 50 or a Lear or, or a challenger. Those are pretty quick. Um, it, it's when we're brokering out somebody else's plane, there's often a lot more back and forth probably because the, the, the information isn't really at our fingertips and, and it's off brand. If some, if, if we're, Right now, we don't operate Gulf Streams. There's no Gulf Streams on our website. So if we're arranging a Gulf Stream for somebody, it, it's naturally off-brand. It's not, nothing wrong with it, but um, it just it's gonna it's gonna lead to more questions and, and more things that that we don't know internally that we got to go get. Got to go get the trip check. Got to get the pass report. Got to get the. It's all about the data. Uh, yeah, all yeah, the. I got it. Check those boxes. It's all yeah. It's all all day long. The tech team's working on better data, better data, better data. <laughs> Um, and then last question, I ask everyone this, no matter where they are in this industry, what, what's your thought on, and have you even had people request to pay flights by cryptocurrency? I have never had somebody pay for a flight by cryptocurrency, but we have had somebody buy a fractional share of a jet through crypto. Okay. So it's a different mentality. I think if, if somebody were, you know, I, I'm not into crypto myself, but I, I think of of Bitcoin as being like a reserve currency, so it would seem silly to liquidate Bitcoin to spend on a twenty five thousand dollar jet charter. Like it would be like selling a gold, you know, gold coins to go do that. However, the fractional program that we have, or buying the, the you know a whole aircraft, that's really an investment because the, the the person is is buying that share to save money over the next five years every time they they access private air travel but they're buying this this asset a jet or a fraction thereof to save money because private air travel is part of their lifestyle so in that case it can make perfect sense and i I, i've seen it make sense for an investor to liquidate part of their crypto portfolio to make that investment and another reason that that somebody might avail themselves of that is obviously because of the privacy, right? It, dollars aren't, aren't changing hands. It's an, it's an anonymous transaction. Um, and for, for some people that, that anonymity is, is going to be important. Yeah. We've, for us, we've had a lot of requests for that. So we're, um, we have integrations done. We just haven't turned it on yet. We're kind of waiting a little bit longer um, to integrate it. We have a CMO who's working on the marketing of that too. So we're going to kind of push that out for us soon. But it's interesting. It's something I didn't really want to get into. But um, actually, the uh, last podcast I did was with, I think it t- we talked about this la- early in the week too, a uh, company called Foreign Pay, and they do cryptocurrency. It's instant, instant transactions. So there's zero risk for for us, for our customer. You know, hit, you know so there's, because uh, pe- some people will do a transaction and they'll hold 10% of, the, of their earnings in a, you know, a bank account. And so we, we, we don't want the risk. We can complete transaction wave for somebody, but uh, it's like, you know, it's kind of like you said, it, it, it's an investment, but it's not an investment. It's not an investment for us. Yeah. I mean, just the, the, the dollars that move around are, are in, in our, as an operator in, in our, our, our cost structures. So the fuel bills and, and all these things, we need to keep all of our, of our dollars just on top of the table. So, but 
we're, we're not opposed to, to, to transacting in, in, in crypto. And, um, you know, I, I do think that, that as an, as a, a way to finance ownership solutions, I think it makes a heck of a lot of sense. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to talk to those guys about, about yeah, the, I can hook you guys up the amount of the accounts that are opening up they're, they're talking about it's staggering. It's on, un- it's hundreds of millions of accounts that are opened up and will be opening up uh, by the middle of next year. It's crazy. So that's why we feel we should at least have it as an option. So we're going to, we'll implement that as well. Yeah, man. I, I, I'll follow your lead. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch after all this. Cool. Well, it, was a, it was a great uh, conversation, Justin. I, I learned a lot as I always do on these, um, these podcasts. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, David. It was a blast. Of course, of course. And I just want everyone to know to look up Justin and his team. Just go to ajxjets.com, ajaxjets.com. Pretty easy, cool name. Great founder, great operator. Really, seriously, t- take a look at Ajax. I think um, if you want premium service, they will not let you down. Thanks again, Justin. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the Jetmetric Podcast today. We hope you all learned a little, maybe became a bit smarter, and maybe, just maybe, you're now a Jet Center, or at least on your way to be. The Jetmetric Podcast is brought to you by Airbook One where booking private jet charters has never been easier with guaranteed pricing, a high-end flight concierge team, and a super cool app. Check out Airbook One at www.airbookone.com and on both the Apple app and Google Play stores. This podcast can be found at www.jetmetricpodcast.com and, of course, at the Airbook One homepage. Have a great day. and Until next time on the Jetmetric Podcast, read, learn, and fly.